Welcome back to the All Things Dead podcast with your host, Steve Kachevsky, or Coach Steve. That is me. Everything in the Walking Dead universe is discussed here from the Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, Walking Dead World Beyond. Hopefully, at some point, the Rick Grimes movies. At some point, a Negan spinoff. And we are going to get a Carol and Daryl spinoff. At some point, when Fear the Walking Dead enters into the Walking Dead, it's going to be discussed here. Right now, we are in Fear the Walking Dead Season 6. We got episode 12, In Dreams. Before I get going, please like and subscribe. Right now, the U- the channel is the Coach Steve Show on YouTube. May make an own, my own YouTube for All Things Dead, but for right now, it is on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel. But the All Things Dead podcast can be listened to everywhere podcasts are listened to. Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you listen to, it's there. Go check it out, please. Like, subscribe, leave a review, share it out. Do all that good stuff. Give it stars, thumbs up, high fives, everything else. All Things Dead podcast. Like I said, we are moving along with Fear the Walking Dead. And I know these are coming out late. Stuff happened. I'm sorry. It is what it is. But we're here to recap for anybody that's watched it and just want to listen. People that haven't watched it and want to discuss it. I'm here for you. All right. So. The last episode we just had was season six, episode 12. It's crazy. We only have four more episodes left of Fear the Walking Dead of season six. And then I believe The World Beyond will be back. And then we're going to get, I believe, August 22nd. The Walking Dead will be back with its final season. It's crazy. The OG will be done. But it's going to take about a year and a half for them to do 22 to 24 episodes. Something crazy. So... We now have Fear the Walking Dead Season 12, or Season 6, Episode 12, titled In Dreams. Picking up a little bit where we left off with Alicia leaving, or being left, sacrificing herself for the group, telling Morgan, we know Grace is pregnant. Now, this episode... I did not have any spoilers. The only thing I looked at, I look at are the ratings. Regardless of what you think, this episode did not get a lot of good reviews. It did not get ranked very high. Um, I don't know why it wasn't a bad episode. It wasn't like the other Fear the Walking or uh, the Walking Dead, those six extra episodes. Um. It's not that bad. Not that bad. Uh, Yeah, it wasn't ranked very high. I was able to, you know, not get any spoilers. I was I was able to to avoid all that. Um, Excuse me, I'm trying to find the rankings. I believe they only got like six stars, which is crazy because there need there's been worse episodes than that. Um, but this episode was a bit tri- trippy. It's exactly what it sounds like in dreams. This episode was basically 90% fantasy. It was a dream. Uh, your synopsis, you know, Grace wakes up with a case of amnesia and sees what has become of her friends after she has been gone for years as she struggles to put puzzle pieces together at what's transpired. And that's exactly what it is. Like, I I have never done drugs, but I would assume for somebody, no offense to anybody that has done, if you do acid, I feel like that's what this episode was. We get this colorful look, this pink um, leaves all over the trees. Uh so you get this colorful look that we've never seen before. The only time we've seen something like this was back in The Walking Dead where we got Old Man Rick, Negan planting a garden. Uh, they're all sitting around a table, all this stuff. Uh, we, so we haven't seen something like that since. Um so we, we, we get this colorful look. You have Grace waking up. And right away you start to go, was there drugs involved? What is going on? Um, you get walkers. You get somebody saving Grace. 
and immediately she wakes up and realizes she's like, you know, this this woman that had saved her says, "What's your name?" And that she's like, "I I can't remember." Uh, and so you immediately realize that okay, the moment she says that this cannot be a real thing because Grace is no longer pregnant when this happens. So immediately you start to think, um, is she dead? Did something happen? Uh, you know, did she fall and hit her head? Did, did, did something else happen? Is she asleep? Is this a dream? I mean, the title is In Dreams. Um, but the acting... Um, was pretty good, but anyway, we'll we'll get to that. Uh, I apologize. We're trying to make sure that I have everything for you guys in this podcast. This might be the worst one I have done. Play by Karen Davids. All right, Karen Davids. Um portrayal of grace and this acting was phenomenal so some of the things i saw was acting this acting that this was like a filler episode and it was it was a filler episode i understand but it wasn't that bad the filler episodes from walking dead was even worse so anyway we're gonna move along i apologize brain i had a brain malfunction brain fart it happens it's a podcast um but like i said i imagine if you've done acid this is exactly what it is I, it almost felt like um the beatles um when they're yellow submarine stuff, um, strawberry fields, all that stuff. That's kind of what you, I, I got that vibe. Um, now again, they're taking things from the walking dead. So you have Maggie being led to the community that she was a part of with Morgan and everything starts to come back. She goes, wait a minute. This wasn't like this. We've only been here a couple months. Like it was not like this. Um, Athena, who we find out her name's Athena is taking her. Is very confused. Like, Oh, she must've done acid. And you say you see Morgan's um, staff where he puts the axe. You know he combined them as still. He put it in the ground and said he hopes he never uses this again. It's still there. She grabs onto it. And immediately, all these memories start coming back. And then we see old man Morgan, and Grace immediately it recognizes her. Goes Morgan. Morgan doesn't recognize her. So right now, the way this episode is going, it's like okay, she hasn't woken up. They haven't shown present day stuff. What is going on? Do I need to do acid to figure this out? Do I need to go, you know, do something? No idea. We still have these this pink stuff going on. It's bright colors. Now, what I say by they're stealing from The Walking Dead, we had this, oh, I think it was season eight. They had old man Rick. You know, they had Carl there. They had old man Rick. They had Negan planting the garden. Um, Michonne was a little older. Daryl looked the same. He's ageless. Everybody else aged. So we started to wonder as Walking Dead fans, because I remember they woke up, Rick had the beer, like, this is from the comic book. So are we going to get this in fear? Well, or in Walking Dead, well, we all know we did it. So automatically you're seeing this, and the way it's happening, you're going, she did, did she do acid? Is this the future? But what's going on? Nobody recognizes her. Um, then you see the community, you know, they have, it's grown. They have this huge wall to protect and they've got a protective wall. Like we saw like at the prison from back in the walking there, where they had the spikes poked up at the prison. I think they even have it at Alexandria at one point or the hilltop, I think in the walking dead where they've got the spikes and the wall before the wall inside, they've got horses, they've got goats, they've got farming. They have a bunch of buildings. They have a bunch of commu- like a huge community now. So you get to see this, and I think I think this was a nod to what Morgan wants. Now, he could have had this in Alexandria or the Hilltop if he went back. And why nobody in The Walking Dead is worried about where Morgan is? Will that ever be addressed in The Walking Dead or in this? I hope so. He's, he's a big-time character. So you kind of see what Morgan has been preaching about since season four or five, about what kind of community he wants, what this looks like, and all that stuff. Then you see characters as they got older. You get to see Dwight. He's with Sherry. They have two kids, a boy and I can't remember if it was a boy or a girl, but the, the person that played their son was actually the son of, of the, the, the character who plays Dwight. Um, that was his actual 
kid. I'm Austin Emilio. I had another fart, brain fart. Austin Emilio just came to me. Um, that was actually his son, which was pretty cool. So he's back with Sherry. Um, June, we see an older version of June. And we see somebody with her. They're checking on Grace to see if she has concussion, if anything's wrong. Charlie, she said, this is Charlie. So you see Charlie all grown up. Uh, so it's crazy to see these characters as they got older. You even saw um, uh, goats running around. You even saw, uh, oh, you even saw that Grace. He Morgan's like, you're not Grace. Why do you keep bringing her up and show that she died? And he's like, so what are you doing here? What is this? You're dead. So that's kind of where you do go. Should we have done acid? What is going? I mean, I'm sorry. I keep saying that, but you see the pink. You see this, you see that. Um, so you start to wonder what's going on. He shows her her grave, asked how she died. She says she died in childbirth. You did have a child. It was a girl. Did she survive? And he said, yeah, you already met her. So you find out Athena, who I believe said was 16. You find out this was her daughter. So it's is she seeing into the future? Is she a ghost? Well, that they can see. Who knew? So this is what's going through your mind at this time. And again, as a fan of Fear and The Walking Dead, you're going, okay, what is this? We know something's up. But then you're kind of like, okay, let's move it along. Um, you even see Daniel giving Strand a haircut. They're older. And they're buddy-buddy, which was strange. Right then and there, you kind of knew something was wrong. So Morgan's trying to figure out what this is. You see this community grown. You kind of find out that Grace told, tells Morgan, like, I didn't think this was able to happen. So now you start to think, oh, you, now we know what you're really thinking. And Now, I understand why people may not have thought this was a great episode. It was slow moving, very confusing, um, especially when Grace, Morgan, and Athena are out. And then you see the car that says the end is the beginning. And Morgan makes comments about this group is still around. Car blows up. And then everything starts to piece itself a little bit together. And this is where I could see as a fan, you're starting to get frustrated because you have what's going on in this Beatles world with the pink. And then we're getting little glimpses of what's going on in the real, real world. You're hearing Morgan's voice. Great. Stay with me. Great. Stay with me. Now you can start to piece together that this car exploded real in front of her, knocked her unconscious. Grace in this world realized this is my brain is trying to put it together. So as a fan, I get where you are frustrated with this, where they're trying to piece it together, where we're flipping back and forth of in the Beatles world, in the mind, you have Grace trying to put this together of what happened. And then you're seeing what happened where she was in labor. Morgan's trying to drive her to June because June's trying to build a hospital. I want to say maybe where Virginia's place used to be, maybe she's trying to build a hospital there, was trying to get Grace there. They got stuck. A car blew up and messed her up. And it's from this group, this cult group that we just talked about in the last podcast and the last episode. Um, in the Beatles world, you got they're trying to figure out. Um, Athena keeps killing these walkers over and over. And this is where Grace kind of figures out this isn't real. This is in my mind. Athena has this cassette player and it's been the symbol. Grace takes it and realizes that Morgan gave this to her to play music while they're driving. Let me try to communicate has it on. But then you figure out that Morgan had put it on her in the real world. So her brain is when you're unconscious, your brain is trying to piece things together. You might have a dream. You might do this. Not so what's happening in the real world or real world around you is going to happen in the dream or this vision when you have a concussion, when you knocked on conscience, um, maybe you're in a coma type thing. Cause when you're in a coma, they tell you to people to talk, you're going to have this going on. So the brain is hearing this and that's where it's piecing this together. So in the real world and in, in the Beatles world, Grace realizes something's going on. She was in labor. Is there a group after her? She's having visions of the, cult group which is strange because i don't know if she's ever really seen them in person so that part's kind of weird and i believe that's the same actor from terminator 3 who plays um john i'm just saying people may not like terminator 3 but i do it's a good movie arnold schwarzenegger can't go wrong glad to see him back doing something if that's him 
I'll have to look it up as I'm talking because uh, that'd be fantastic. Uh, he's a good actor. And Terminator 3, I thought he was a good actor. Nick Stahl, I believe his name is. Yep, he was in Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Played John Connor, see? There you go. So it's glad to see he's back in something like this. And I think he was in something else as we're on this conversation. Been a couple things. Something with Mel Gibson. He played the voice in the video game. That's all right. We're back to fear. So that's parts under, kind of weird. So in, in the Beatles world, in this pink world, Grace figures out that she has to get closer in the world. She's like, okay, there's a veterinary place or, or wherever. We have to get there so that way her, the mind is starting. So the mind is trying to find its way back. So what we're seeing in the episode is the mind fighting to get its way back to wake up. Again, that's what happens in comas. It's what happens when you get concussion. What happens when you get knocked out. Um, it's trying to find its way back. And the reason why you have Athena, her daughter, is because she is pregnant. So that's a part of her. So her trying to find her way back to the body, it's symbolizing that the baby's along for the ride. And so that's kind of what's going on. And the reason why you see Morgan at first and he disappears is because she, the, the mind can't figure out where Morgan is, so that's why he's not there. When she's originally unconscious, she, the, it's kind of this dream, and then, then you start to see pieces of the brain cannot figure out where he is. So, also, before I get to the real world, they're trying to figure out how to get to the vet, and you get the white horse. That devil white horse looks like the same white horse that threw Rick off to stab him in there and then eventually left him when he was in the woods, just took off. So that devil horse, I originally saw and said, this is leading to no good. I'm going to have to see if that was posted somewhere, but that white devil horse did the same thing to Rick. So I said, don't be trusting that horse. And then I said, but like, nothing happened to that horse. I hate when things happen to the horses or the dogs in the show. So while that's going on in the real world, Morgan you know, seemed like there was a roadblock with the car when it blew up. He, Morgan was able to pull, pull her into this. I don't know if it was veterinary place or some building. And then you see there was these horse stables. So maybe it was a veterinary place. Maybe it was a farm. Then you get the group um, back, the cult group. You know, they're, they're showing up. Um, looking for Morgan. And quickly realize that they're looking for Morgan. Um, I, I believe the guy's name was Riley. I believe Nick Stahl, whoever said that played in Terminator's name, is Riley. And they show up looking for Morgan, saying, You have something we want. And you got to remember back, he had this key in the Beatles world. Athena has this key in her mind. They show up and say, We need this key. Athena says, The key is the key to. Um, survival, I think, or the key to freedom or key, whatever they said it was. And that kind of pointed to, to, to Grace's brain. This is what these people are after. Morgan's trying to get a hold of June to get there. And so in the real world, you got Morgan having to take Grace and put her in a stall, uh, a horse stall. And then we finally get to see a little bit of the old Morgan. He has this old walk, some type of walking stick with him, like he did. These people come in and said, you know, give us the key. That key is everything. So this key means a lot. It opens something up, whether it's to hurt people, whether it's to take people over, whether it's for this group to survive for supplies. Who knows what it's for? Does it have something to do with the CRM? I have no idea. They want it. Morgan said, and they said, when we try to get the key, our people didn't come back. I'm sure you had something to do with it. And we finally get the old Morgan of, uh, yeah. And if you don't leave now, the same thing's going to happen to you. They think they can take Morgan. And we all know they need to go turn on The Walking Dead. They don't know who they're messing with. Morgan quickly handles most of them. Riley, he only stabs and lets them leave. This is the new Morgan letting them go. The old one probably would have ripped his throat out and everything else. 
So he takes care of business. He's trying to get Grace to wake up. And you could, and, and a point in the Beatles world where you could tell that Athena, the reason why she's there in this dream and this vision, um, at one point, it looked like Grace was having a contraction while she was unconscious a little bit. And Athena and the vision was hurting. So they're connected. And that's why this is happening. The brain can't figure out where Morgan is. That's where they're looking. And the brain's hoping if we can get to the same spot in our vision, we will be there. Um, and, and so when the fight's going on with Morgan, the brain knows there's a fight going on. So in the world with the pink leaves, Grace and Athena are fighting the exact same guys in the vision. Now, again, I don't know how she knows what they look like. But the brain is doing what it's hearing and knows what Morgan's doing, so it's doing the same. And so we go through that fight sequence, which is great. The acting is great. It's phenomenal. A lot of people don't like the episode, but you got to respect the acting. It was great. A little bit of annoying at times. It was great. Um, then you get... Then, then you have this... You know, pay attention if you guys haven't watched the episode yet and you're listening to this. And if you listen to this first, thank you. Um, where the zombie or the Walker version of Riley says, is like holding the key and says, you know, you thought this, I'm, I'm butchering it, saying that you thought that this was going one way, you thought this is what it was, but really it's a dream. So we got to pay attention to that quote. They focused really big on that. So in my mind, you're focusing on that saying, okay, well, what's going to happen? You're going through the sequence in the Beatles stuff to show because we got to remember, Grace brought this up. She uh, is sick. She had this radiation. And the boyfriend, who's the biological father, um, she has radiation. And so during this sequence in this world, it could be the brain letting Grace come to grips with that. She's probably going to not be around. When she gives birth, she may not survive. May not survive very long but it's hopeful for the future of this child. So in her mind, this is the future. And we had a great, kind of a great scene where, you know, Grace passes out in the dream. That's the sequence of like, she's dead. Morgan's trying to get her back. The brain finally clicks of Morgan's here for me. Morgan, the old man, Morgan appears. So the brain's finally figure out where they're at. Finally figures out Morgan's the one trying to pull them out. They realize there was a fight going on, realize they have to survive and that it has a child. So the brain is great. We get to see the sequence live of what it's going through in the mind, in the Beatles world, the acid world. The door opens up where she walks through. Um, she comes back. And then that's where it's kind of weird. She immediately comes back and wasn't she in labor and it's immediately gone. That was, that was weird. The part that gets annoying when she comes back and she's talking about this dream she had, this vision of a, it's a girl and you could tell Morgan's looking at her like, what happened? What did you take? What happened? Now, he's going along with it because he has feelings for her. Um, he doesn't want to upset anybody, you know, all this and that. But you could just tell um, Lenny James does a good job acting with the face of like, what? Are you crazy? That's I think that's what's clicking through his mind. She's talking about how everything's going to be okay. It, Athena, is a, is a, it, her baby's a girl. It's going to be named Athena. She's going to bring everybody together. Um, then Riley shows back up. Truck comes in. He's got a gun this time. I don't know where the gun was the first time. You, you can't fight Morgan in a one on one. I think even Morgan would beat Negan, um, especially if he has the stick. Riley, you know, is like, I will kill Grace. And this key, it's all about this key. And that's where Grace in her mind was like, the key, you know, the key to survival or whatever phrase they said. Give him the key, and she's forgetting. Morgan does not want to give him the key because he is. He's thinking probably what we're all thinking. That key is going to open something up to hurt them, to destroy what they're building, to do something. So he doesn't want to give it up, and she's yelling at him to give it up. And you could tell Morgan wants to say like, "You're crazy. What? What are you talking about? This vision you had. It's it's just a dream. You can't see the future. You could tell that's the type of stuff he was thinking or wanting to say. He gives him the key. When she said Athena's going to change everything, it's going to bring everybody together. All the 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 primal Morgan, the the crazy Morgan, the old Morgan from Walking Dead days before he had this epiphany and then went back and then back. He you could tell when he was walking away, he kind of wanted to say, 
something about how they got the key, and that's what he's worried about. That's where his mind is because he is responsible for everything. He has taken on this leadership wreck role and is in charge of everybody. And these decisions he makes affects everybody. The, now, the part of the episode where I could have gone out, got not seen, was the birthing montage. Just seen later. It was kind of funny later. It was like in slow motion. It was like a montage. The, the music that was playing, I was like, is this Three's Company? Is this an 80s montage of a, you know, like, it's Morgan and Grace and Athena. And like, it's just this 80s montage. I have no idea. That I could have gone without. Um, now the twist that I didn't see coming was the baby is born. Morgan's face was deadly, deadly. And I knew just from the look of like, this baby didn't make it. This baby didn't make it. That really bothered me. And so I was able to avoid that type of spoiler. The baby didn't make it. Athena didn't make it. And that's when the world comes crashing down on Grace. She just lost her child in childbirth. We've seen a child be born in The Walking Dead. Lori gave birth to Judith. Lori didn't make it. Now, I didn't like Lori, so that didn't bother me. But to see the baby be born and not make it in this world, and especially everything we just saw. So you have to go back to what um, the Walker Riley said, like you thought it was going to go one way. You thought this was this and I'm butchering it, but it was just a dream. So that was kind of foreshadowing of you think that we're going to have grace, not make it or something. Or we're going to have this, this vision, I think was foreshadowing to the body and the brain that the baby is a part of her. But those were the last moments with the baby, like the brain and the body is trying to say this baby, something's wrong. Like it's going to, it's the body's trying to say something's wrong. We didn't see it that way because it was Beatles world. It was acid world. It was this pink world. And Grace was so positive and, and it broke Morgan. It broke Morgan. Grace realizes what happened. It was just a dream. And I think uh, crashing down was you have the baby. They didn't make it the enemy got what they wanted because of this. Now, this episode was released on Mother's Day, so it was a big thing. So this is a huge, dark churn. You had this upbeat pink stuff. This is a dark churn. Fear did get a little dark. You know, last time you had the Saw movie vibe, um, torture vibe uh, that was going to happen. You're in this underground place. Then you have a baby not make it. Like, they went dark. I don't even know if fear... I mean, Walking Dead's done some dark things. They're trying to do that, so they went dark. Um, it's very sad. Um, never knew they would go that far as the baby not making it. Um, that's where it ends. And, you know, next time on the next episode, you're supposed to see June back out doing stuff. Morgan will be back. They're going to have to talk with Grace about what happened. Like, it's going to be big. These last four episodes are probably going to be big. Now, I hope that they wrap up this group. But I hope wrapping up this group leads to something with the CRM or everything. But the next episode, they're going to have to come to grips with what happened with this baby. Um, if fear wants to go dark, does the baby turn into a zombie? Because in The Walking Dead, you know, they talk about we all have they all have the virus. So when they die, the brain we've seen when well, they went to the CDC and the last episodes of The Walking Dead season one, when they die, something happens back with the brain. They come back as this zombie and it wants to survive by eating meat like humans and animals. And it can smell and and hear, and that's what attracts them. And. Why I remember the question when Judith was born was, does, does Judith have the virus? She wasn't around for it, but does Lori give that virus to her? Is it still in the air? So I'm not trying to overshadow the baby not making it that very dark. But I think if they want to continue down this path of like, we're going to be dark, guys. Like, we're going to go walking dead dark. Does the baby turn into a zombie? 
or a walker, that would just ruin the rest of like, how can we continue to survive if this happens? So maybe they do, maybe they do talk about it. Maybe it turns into a walker and that's going to change everything. They just can't repopulate. Um, or maybe it doesn't, it never turns into a walker. And so now that you have this idea of like, we can still figure this out and, and get everything going, you know, repopulate the earth and, and, and all that stuff. That would be crazy. That'd be crazy. I don't think we've seen a baby be born or anything like that. And that happens. So if they want to go dark, they would make it a walker. But I think they went dark enough. You, I mean, at least for me, I thought the episode Grace was going to pass away the way it was going. Like it was almost like a send off. You had the vibe, not quite like I have to relate to something. You had the vibe of old man Rick and, and when it was Carl's vision. But you also had not similar, not 100% like Rick's last episode, but similar things like he was going into his mind, then was coming back to the real world. Now, this was more of the Beatles world in the brain, but it was similar. Like Rick was seeing things, trying to find his family, the brain and the body were trying to get in there. Grace's mind. New kind of was trying to picture what's going on and put it back together, and we just saw it live. So, fear went dark, they lost the child. Fear is pretty good this season, they've stolen some things from The Walking Dead, but I mean, what better place to steal it from? Um, yeah, so I think this is gonna this will break Grace, something might happen. I think this is gonna break Morgan, it wasn't his child, but to go through that and lose the key to that and then on top of that I predict Morgan's going to snap there's a reason why that thing is still on the ground it's a symbol but there's a reason why we keep seeing it on camera I have a feeling he'll snap he's going to snap here at some point and God help that cult group he's going to snap so we're moving right along with fear I think they've they go to episode 16, so we've got four more episodes. We've got episode 13 next week. June meets a new character. We've got an RV. We've got different things. So, again, this the video will be up on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel uh, I, until I think about or wanting to create a YouTube channel just for the All Things Dead part, maybe, but it's going to be on the Coach Steve Show YouTube part. But the podcast is All Things Dead. Spotify, Apple, Google, anywhere the podcast can be listened to, that's where it is. Like, subscribe, thumbs up, stars, leave a review, please, and thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Continue to stay fans of The Walking Dead. We'll get through it as they all come to a close here in the next year and a half to two years and then go off on their own for other things. Um, but this has been the All Things Dead podcast. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you guys next time for Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 13.